Okay, so uh, my name is Alvin. Um, I've been doing JavaScript for about two or three years, and I've been with this group for about a year. So I learned a lot from this group here. Um, I think it's time to give back. So uh, I'm not a good public speaker, so if you have any questions, and I'm really junior, so um, raise your hand and ask. So uh, I'm gonna talk about Postman and Jetpack. Uh, any of you guys in the room has ever used JavaScript to uh, make HTTP call? Yes? <laughs> RESTful API? Yes? So do you guys find testing is like a pain? Yes? So yes. So a couple of years ago, uh, when I go into a JavaScript world, um, testing against uh, some kind of API in development, well, get me headache. So I find this good tools, it's called the Postman, uh, which kind of solved my problems. So I want to share it with you guys. Uh, so Postman is pretty much a web app you can get from Chrome. So just go to Chrome App Store and you can download it. Um, I already have it installed, so I'm just gonna start it up. And this is how it looks like. Can you see it from here? Yes, okay. So how do we use it? Uh, basically, you just want to make a call Uh, a get call, and then you send it. It's gonna take a while, and then you'll get back the results in the body, raw format. You can prefile it. Well, it's a big file, so it's gonna take uh, some time to, you can like preview it. Uh, you'll get useful information, like the response header, and all those stuff. So uh, pretty much a uh, pretty neat interface for you uh, compared to the Google uh, development tools. So it also supports other requests like pull requests and a bunch of uh, RESTful, so put and so on and so forth. So uh, what it accelerate between this one and the Google developer tools is um, give you a nice interface. So uh, let's say if you want to do a put request, a post request, so you can pretty much, um, oops, let me see. So you can, um, you can put in your body here, so which kind of hard if you do it on the developer tools. And then you can pretty much enter parameters uh, with keys and values. And then this will just keep adding it onto your uh, parameter strings. You can also add headers here. So uh, if you have any special headers you want to put in, uh, it will give you a nice interface to add in. So um, if you are using developer tools, then you have to pretty much manually kit it in, or if you are using curl commands, um, this is a step uh, forward. So um, it also supports stuff like the basic authentications uh, and other off methods. So I've been only using OAuth and the basic off. So pretty much you just go here and then enter all the information you need to get the SS token. Um, then you just refresh the headers, and it will generate that specific token for you. Uh, right now, I'm just using a basic off. So uh, this is quite handy uh, in terms of getting tokens. So uh, it also supports stuff like uh, environment variables. So for example, uh, you have a HTTP call that you are going to reuse uh, a lot of times. So your parameters might not always be the same. So you can set up environment variables uh, it's like, it's pretty easy. So you go here and then you just add or you can just modify it. I set up a few of them. So it's pretty much just a key and value pairs. So um, in your workspace here, you can pretty much just use a double bracket and then you can put in your uh, environment variable keys and then pretty much then you can just uh, send it, oops. And then it will try to, hey, oh, five. <laughs> yes. Well, um, oh, yeah. Let's see. Do I have any environments in the Mona Lisa? Yes. So if I search for this, then I will, hey, I still get back. Anyways, but you got the idea. So you can use variables, environment variables, so that you can have the same request with different value. And you can easily swap it by swapping like different set of uh, environment variables. 
So the other cool thing about this is um, you can reuse the request here. Uh, if you make a request and you want to reuse it later on, you can pretty much add it to a call address. You can create a new one or you can just use anything existing. So if I do a test here, uh, and that uh, we just create a new call address with uh, this URL here. So now, if you close the browser and come back next time, you don't have to key in everything again. You can just go here, click on this, and then click on the send buttons, and then you just make the same request that you have been making. So um, I have created some of the uh, examples here. So um, this will give us a little bit uh, better. So if I did the same request, then every time I'll just make the same request again. So um, the other cool thing is uh, you can export uh, your collections. So pretty much um, if the guy sitting next to you, they have Postman, you can share your collections by either uploading to the cloud, uh, which is going to be on postman.com, or you can download it as a file. So you will have a JSON files that you can send it to the buddy next to you, and they can use the same collections. Uh, so you can share the same uh, API. So, uh, so far, so good. Yes? Um, they are JSON objects that is readable by the postman itself. So, uh, so if the guys next to you want to use the collections, they need to install postman as well. All right, so um, am I going too fast, too slow? Okay, all right. So um, that's pretty much uh, about the Postman. So now we are going to talk about uh, Jetpack. So uh, Jetpack is pretty much a uh, plugin for the Postman. So I look at it as uh, Postman on steroid, I guess. Um, it gives us several features that the typical Postman doesn't have. So uh, it has a script tag here. It's called a P request script. Well, this is a JS script, so we got to involve something with JavaScript, right? So, uh, in this uh, tab here, if you hit on it, you will have a nice editing area where you can just uh, put in some simnet on it. Um, those are JavaScript based. Uh, so most of the time here, uh, people will do is they can set the global variables or they can set some environment variables before they run uh, the script. So this will execute before your HTTP request uh, sent out. So um, it also supports uh, a bunch of other stuff, like uh, if you want to use libraries, it supports like jQueries, uh, Backbone, uh, tiny validators. So um, I'm not going into the whole list here because each of them are going to be a topic itself. So um, this is pretty handy. So the other thing about the Jetpack is uh, it has this little tab here uh, called a test. So this will run after your HTTP request being sent. So it has the same features as the uh, P request tab, but it has some pretty nice uh, extra features. So um, you can, there is a bunch of similar on the right here. Um, you can, if it's XML response, uh, you can pretty much pass your body into XML and then try to uh, look into the body itself by your coding. Um, you can do something as simple as checking whether the status is uh, 200, so you will know whether you get a successful response or you will get a 404. Um, there is also cool stuff like um, you can, I can't see it. So you can see uh, the request time if it's like more or less than a certain time, so if the request is too long, uh, you have this little test script where you can uh, make it pass or fail. So uh, there are lots of cool little simnet where you can do to test your HTTP request. So how do we test it? Um, so basically, if you run uh, a command with the test here, uh, you will have this tab here called the test, and it will tell you the response of uh, whatever simnet you have and then what you are trying to test. So let's say if I want to, if I expect this request to be 400, if I send it, then it will show you red and it will fail. Clean it. Yes. Um, questions so far? 
Okay. Um, so uh, the other thing cool about the Jetpack is because um, it allows you to use JavaScript. So you can pretty much train your requests. Uh, you can set global variables as well as environment variables here. So uh, let's say if you have a request that is depend on the previous request, for example, um, I have something like this here called a get offer. So it requires ID and then the ID is getting from get offers. So I need to grab an ID from here and then I need to pass it to the next request. So in here, I can go to the test script and I can pretty much set this uh, data offer IT into a global variables and then pass it onto the next uh, request. I uh, can't really see from my screen here. So uh, that will give you uh, the ability of training requests. So um, the last features uh, for the Jetpack, uh, so you have all those requests. Um, if you want to run it, you still have to send it like one by one and then look at your test to make sure that like they are passing. So they have something called a collections runner. So uh, if you open a collections runner, so basically you just select your collections and you select environment variables, um, then you can pretty much, if you have predefined uh, environment variables, you can save it as like a CSV files and then you can upload it, uh, which I don't have right now. So, but once you start it, then it will just run through the whole uh, collections that you have and then test all the requests one by one uh, in sequence. So it will give you a pretty nice report of uh, what you are failing in your API. Questions? Um, well, if you don't need the P script or the test uh, features, you can just use Postman. But uh, if you want to use the collections runners, or if you want to have the ability to have some zip that onto your request, then you will need to install the uh, Jackpack plugin. Yes? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, you have like a 30, uh, 30 days, I think, trials, and then you pay about $9.99. Uh, then you can use it forever. So, well, I take the bite, I skip my lunch, and then pay for these little tools, and then it pay back. So, <laughs> any other questions? Yes. Um, good questions. So, uh, it's kind of like different way of running the test cases. Uh, this one, because you can create the tests. Uh, here easily with a rich user interface. So let's say if you have someone who don't know JavaScript, uh, maybe they are backend developers, then they can easily create some kind of like a test using a SIPnet and then you can share with the people who is using JavaScript. At least this is like my applications uh, previously. So uh, the other thing is um, this will be running on a Chrome browser if you run it. So if you are using uh, Mocha or Jasmine, uh, you are running on Phantom JS. So which sometimes might not be truly the same as uh, you are running on an actual browser. So any other questions? All right. So uh, lastly, uh, you can look at the history here, and then pretty much any time you run a questions runner, uh, you will see your previous report. So then you can pretty much run about 10 or 15 times and then you can have like look back and see how often the back end does fail. So um, that's it for the Jetpack and the Postman. Oh, one more thing. Um, there is something called the uh, interceptors in Postman. So what you do is if you start it, um, if you go to a web page, oh, you have to uh, start on the web page as well. So what it does, it will intercept all the calls, and then it will just put all the calls for that call here on the history. So you can just look at each one of them, look at the headers, and see how the request form. So basically, going to googles.com will give me all those histories. So you can just look into it and then see how the search has been doing. 
you can also look at other APIs and see uh, how they form. Um, I've been using this to try to capture tokens so I can reuse their requests. So this is another handy and useful thing uh, the Postman offer. So that's it. Um, any questions? Um, those similar, they come with the programs, uh, but you can write your own. So uh, those are just like a starting point for you. You can change them. Um, most of you guys are probably familiar with JavaScript here, so you can pretty much go whole nine yards and then have your little libraries uh, in here, or you can do some other crazy stuff here. It's just JavaScript, so you can um, write whatever you want. Any other questions? In terms of testings, uh, you can only do single thread. Well, at least this is what I have been doing. So, questions? All right. Well, thank you. <laughs>